section. Um, the first two pages deal with the water department. Um, the first page shows revenue and expenses plus the transfers we're required to make you know, to reserve accounts. Um, this is with the new water rates. Um, we're, we're projected to have an annual loss of just over $20,000. If you look at the second page, I've got the current rates that we're at now and then what they would be at different increases by percentage. Um, I put in 5% increases. I zeroed in at exactly what percentage would cover that $20,000 deficit, and that comes in right at 17%. Um, that would raise the first thousand from 24.15 to 26, or 28.26, um, and then additional gallons would go from 11.29 to 13.21. If a customer had a 30 or a 3,000 gallon bill, um, their bill would go from 46.73 to 54.67, an increase of seven dollars and ninety-four cents. Okay. Yes. Okay. Can we we stop here and have everybody mark that little seventeen percent thing? Um, I want to go back and talk about the overall assignment that you had. You might want to go into that so that everybody can understand why you're doing this. These numbers that is pretty solid by our but I'd like you to make. Um, first of all, this is a work session so that we won't have any conversations with the audience because we have to talk about cost and everything's on the <coughs> uh, But we, we got together about this budget because uh, we were three months into it and through your good recording of it and, and looking at the fact that there had been some rate increases that we hadn't increased uh, to our uh, in sales, um, we, we started our work session meetings about three meetings ago. And the area that we really want to talk about first in our budget was going to be the area of water sewer because we thought that that's one of the reasons why we're using general funds for going down so fast is because the use of water and sewer. And um, so in, in that exercise that we had the last couple of uh, meetings, we asked Dave to do an in-depth review of water, uh, the cost of our water, the selling of our water, the usage of our water, and the collection of our water. Uh, also, our labor to run the, uh, the uh, water plant, chemicals, and all that. So, uh, and we looked at the goal of balancing the water sewer budget, you know, exactly what that cost would be. And as you can see, it's a pretty big increase on the first thousand gallons. Like Dave said, it's probably about, what, $7? If we went to 17 miles? If we right 17 there. for the... This would include the first thousand and, and the additional thousand. Um, if a customer used um, three thousand gallons, that's just an example of what average people use. Um, it would increase the, just the water side, seven, eight bucks, basically, to seven dollars ninety four cents. And this would increase our revenue by how many dollars? Uh, it would increase our revenue by twenty one thousand three hundred sixty six dollars and nine cents. And that's our shortfall as it is right now, basically. That would cover the twenty thousand. Yeah. Uh, this kind of work this is very important that we have an exact number. And so, Dave, it's not your estimation that these numbers are close to exact? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I took last fiscal year and then I just put in the new rates for the water that we're purchasing. So. Is there anything that could happen that could change that total? Um, I mean, I know it's not anything that could happen. But I mean, yeah. but, I mean, but uh, as, as far as like, I mean, revenue, that's what we're talking about now, the revenue side. But expense size, I mean, you've got your, these expenses could change. Um, but they're pretty similar every year, you know, depending on factors. You know, but basically, everything seems to go up and never goes down. So, but. The uh, increase that we had before was last, an increase we had last year, the year of 2018. And then we had one for the 2019. The 17% increase would cover both increases. Yeah. And then that would break our water budget even. And um, let's go right for that same type of percentage and look at the sewer, okay? In sewer, I did the exact same thing. Um, and as you can see from the first page on sewer, um, where it shows revenue and expenses plus the transfers <coughs> due to the reserve accounts required by USDA. Um, 
that has a deficit of $23,000 annually. Um, did the same exact breakdown on sewer numbers. A little more bleak. Um, did the percentages by five, got to zero in to cover that 23. Uh, that came in at 27%. So that would increase the first thousand from 1895 to 2407. Additional from 788 to 1001. Uh, that would bring in a 23,538. <coughs> as far as the impact on the customers um, on a 3,000 gallon bill, the sewer side would go from 3471 to 4408, representing an increase on 3,000 gallons. Uh, total to be nine dollars and thirty-seven cents. So if I was a customer, and uh, I was really much in my water bill, uh, I had a water sewer bill that was using around three thousand gallons a month. How much would that bill be? <coughs> so if, you, if, if with the increase, yeah, if, the break didn't increase, right? It, right, with, yeah. Your, your bill would go from thirty-four seventy-one to forty-four oh eight. That'd be an increase in 937. Sewer? Oh, just on sewer side here. Okay, let's do the water side. Water side. <laughs> that would be the, to cover the 20,000. That we, we would raise it 17%. Um, as far as the impact on customers, their bill goes from 5673 to 5467, representing an increase on the customer of $7.94. So put those two together, and the average bill for 3,000 gallons of water is going to be how much? Uh, okay, let's take, it, take your time. $98.38. Okay, $98.58. So if I'm using 3,000 gallons of water in this town, my bill's going to be $98.58. So this brings us to a very serious point here, because we have a lot of people in this town that are retired. And uh, already their water bill's high, and they're trying to work with them using just a thousand gallons, and um, and trying to live within that, and uh, taking it much higher than that uh, takes away some of their other things they should have, like coffee in the morning. <laughs> and uh, so I'm thinking when I see this large number, that it's important for the city to be and the citizens of the city to be responsible and support the water market, and we do appreciate having good water and sewer system. But do we have to do this all at one time? Uh, can it be, you know, kind of moved along and done partially over a year or two year budgets to finally balance in, in a year and a half or two years? Do we take the cost right now and say this is what the bill is going to be just to break even? Or do we look at the first thousand gallons and not raise it at all? Leave the first thousand gallons at our old rate and raise our, put in the new, new rate into the two or three thousand gallons. This is for the people that really work hard for that, uh, that uh, 1,000 gallon limit. And I know a lot of people do have been witness to that. Now, that's not to say we have to do that, but um, we have to think of the residents of the city and their income. And we do have to think about our city being successful and surviving this crisis. So, uh, so saying that we can raise our rate to cover our expense with a pretty hard numbers, that you just given us, 98.58 for 3,000 gallon usage for water sewers, that takes care of the problem. Um, we work a little bit with the rate for the people that are trying to work within their 1,000 gallons and maybe not raise the rate there. Is that a possibility that we could do with our computer, you know, and billing? Or you could find out. The other thing is, do we balance our budget on the back of our city residents on water? Or do we try to work with our cost so I think that uh, to be responsible, we should take a little bit away from the cost of what we do here in the city and put a little bit on the increase of the water and somehow come in the middle and balance the budget. I think that's a reasonable Where, where else you can you, take you that resources right. but, and that's, what, that's what this work session is about. And you know, you, I brought, may have been you, you brought up uh, city services. One of the things we want to do is we want to supply the best possible service to our community. That means in our uh, park, in our streets, in our water, in our sewer, and in our protection of the, of the residents that live here, the people that do. Um, so if we look at each department and we say, okay, well, we'll just not have a police officer anymore, and that's going to save us $50,000 a year, and we can 
uh, not have to worry so water rates that much, but they raise them a little bit. Well, that takes away a little bit from public safety. Maybe maybe we don't need to have a full-time policeman, but maybe we want a part-time policeman. Maybe we don't want to raise the water revenues all the way up on the first thousand gallons, but a little bit up. Maybe we want to put these uh, gradual, so that within a year and a half or next year's budget, we, we balance. All those are important, and I'm looking for you uh, to make more suggestions, but just giving you a kind of a broader way of maybe looking at it, that we just don't raise the water rates to balance the water budget. Well, I, I think we could probably uh, attack the expenses in several counts, not just police. Yep. You know, if we divided that up mm -hmm. and then also tacked on a little to the water, I think that would be favorable to everybody, or more favorable. So what, they, what we've asked Dave to do in that area, that gray area we're talking about right now, how to massage this to make it work, is we have, we have uh, job descriptions for all the employees. And it's not that we, that we want to replace any of our employees, uh, but we were talking to the water department about taking samples every day. We have to take samples right every day, right? You ain't got to take water samples every day. Every day. And that takes a city employee to know a qualified person to do that. It doesn't mean that uh, it takes an eight-hour day to do that. How much time do you spend on water sample? Well, that's usually in the morning time. It can be anywhere from, you know, checking the meter, uh, Checking the chlorine, make sure chlorine's pumping, checking the, it normally takes an hour or two. Yeah. I mean, it's just... But either of either our city water employees can do that. Yeah. You could do it or yeah. Mike could so do it. So two hours at the most, right? Huh? Two hours at the most, basically. Basically, as long as nothing's wrong. Yeah. So. Uh, and that... And then Dave, we have a full-time clerk here. And um, it's reasonable. And then the other calls that we have, as far as expenses goes, is collection. And we, like I said, we're not talking about taking employees out of the work. We're talking about um, how we can increase our water rates without increasing our expenses to collect the water. And we talked about if we raised our water rates to the 17% level, that would increase collections by how much? Six percent. So if we raise rates to bring in like an additional twenty thousand, um, I think it's about twenty four hundred. Twenty four hundred. I gotta get so, of it. About, so like but that, if yeah. we increase the rates on uh, uh, on yeah, our yeah. citizens to balance the budget, and then we give the clerk a twenty four hundred dollar raise a year to collect that, since it's really just the same work, maybe we don't want to go that way either. Maybe we want to see be more physically responsible for our residents and say, look, we're going to raise your water rates, but everybody's not getting a raise in this room. You know, we're going to keep a water uh, a collector, but we're not going to be increasing the, um, uh, the amount of money made by the collector. I think that's a reasonable thing. I don't know how we do that. Just like with a thousand gallons, not charging the new rate for the first thousand gallons. I don't know how we do that either. But through systems, we ought to be able to work that out and show the residents of this city that one, we could balance the budget, and two, not on just the backs of them paying their water bill, that we should be able to work with each of our services to, uh, to perform at a, uh, a more effective cost level. <laughs> um, so Rose, you know, you, ha you have uh, some interesting insights on this too, because we talked about water samples and stuff like that. And we talked about how our, our city employees work. Um, one of the things that we see that's outstanding in this budget uh, is that uh, comp time. And where we know we have to have qualified men and women take samples of water, and we want that done for the safety of our residents, um, we're not going to be able to go forward using overtime to do this, to perform our, our daily duties and weekly duties as uh, employees. I think we have to look at taking that out. How do we do that? I don't know, but we need to do it. We need to say a 40-hour work week is what we have to work our men and women that work in the water department. There is no overtime. How do we do it without overtime? So this comp time is basically overtime. Yes. And we owe it. And it's and it's something we've been paying, but uh, do we do we raise the water rates to cover comp time and cover extra raise for the city collector and, uh, you know, 
all this, or do we try to work on those things? I think that in the area of employees, and David did a good job giving us their job descriptions of what they work, and now I know, you know, we really need them. Um, one thing that we could do is uh, eliminate overtime. Is that a scheduling issue, Frank, that we do something like that? Is there well, something, I mean, do you all overlap now? Any kind of way? You can't really, I mean, you can't really get rid of overtime. I mean, there ain't a possible, I mean, what we normally do, and I've been doing it here lately, Mike's been doing it, because nothing's really going on inside the city. So we've been taking a few hours here and there. We'll come in, do our tests, make sure no water meters are, you know, people calling to the water meters or grinders or anything like that. And then we might take a few hours off that day to start dropping our comp time down. Yeah. But the thing about it is, comp time, and I know it's time and a half whenever we work overtime. And it's basically personal time that we use after the fact. We're not actually getting paid for it, but we are getting paid for it. We're getting basically straight time, but it's over time. So we're getting a time and a half, so we're getting an hour, you know, so we're getting a time, an hour and a half for working an hour overtime. So the thing about it is, is with the whole big picture of that, like Mike comes in Saturday, Sunday to take care of the water. That's an hour, two hour job. Just depends on what he's got to do. Uh, the tower ain't uh, acting right. The chemicals ain't pumping right. It might take a little longer. It might take about the same amount of time. It just depends. Uh, the other simple fact is, is just like weekend, last weekend, you know, it wasn't something we wanted to do, but we had a sewer main break. So that's seven or six and a half, seven hours, whatever that was, of time that. We worked right. overtime. So what we've been doing lately is like he's been doing it, I've been doing it. We might have that overtime. So we'll try to use hours up before our two weeks if we do get overtime. And then we might cut into our comp time and start using that. Uh, I mean, we never know when we're going to get called out. I mean, right. I, my neighbor, for instance, uh, his grinder went down. He come over to the house and said, hey, my grinder's down. And then, you know, that was an hour going over to see what was wrong with it. And then another hour, hour and a half to go and grab the tractor and pump it down the next day. You know, so, I mean, you never know when an emergency call is going to come out. So, and you never know how long it's going to take. And all that should be taken into consideration when we work on this new budget. Yeah. That's why I wanted you to talk about that. And thank you for doing that. What is this? L-A-G-E-R-S. What is that? Uh, on My the payroll liability. Oh, my Um, I guess my point is at this at this stage of the budget exercise, David, you've done an excellent job identifying, in your in your estimation, what it's going to cost to cover and balance our budget. So we know that now we have a number to work with to balance our budget. We know we can do it on water. I think our task here now is to I'd like to make a motion to have one more work session this month. Uh, so that we can work on these issues, city employees, the comp time thing, think through it, know what's going to go with it, meet with <coughs> Frank, you know, get involved in the work session with us, uh, meet with the city uh, collector and have her work with us on how we can uh, work that water rate where perhaps on the first thousand gallons we don't make a big increase, we make the increase on the second and third thousand gallons and make it more comfortable for people. Actually how we could <coughs> talk about uh, rolling it in slowly and make a goal of a year and a half to a balanced budget instead of one year uh, so that everybody's not hit with everything at one time. And then um, then talk about our police department and how we can better operate our police department uh, we, uh, to uh, work within our budget and come out there with a budget that you can approve, that you put your signature on, that we'll do. I think what we're looking at is our due diligence. What we need to do now is get down to hard numbers and put together a hard budget at our next work session and uh, present it, approve it, and going forward, um, always stay on top of the balanced budget for our city. Uh, are we required by law of the state of Missouri to have a balanced budget? We're supposed to. Uh, so now, We've got that pretty well settled. We need to talk about these CDs because it's just going on and on and on. Well, I've got another question about 
if we implement this change, the, the effects of the change will take effect immediately. I mean, the increases of rates and reduce the cost and all these things, we, we wouldn't want to say it's not going to change. We're going to say that within a period of time we'll reach uh, a perfect balanced budget. But immediately we're going to see some changes in income uh, once we get our hard numbers. Uh, but Dave, as far as the CD goes, um, at this stage of the game, there is no other way that I see possible to, to uh, pay our bills going forward without cashing a CD. It's, unless somebody else has got money they want to give us. Right. If, if, if we don't have to cash up these CDs, you say that I'm going to have a bunch of checks bouncing next week and, and, and I won't be able to make payroll. Yeah. So you think if we do cash, how, how much time would that give us? Do you think to pay though? Well, Hopefully longer than that. I mean, I'm just throwing out. I mean, yeah. you know, um, I'll say like a month and a half. So if there's a sense of urgency in uh, put implementing a balanced budget plan soon, like before the end of this month. And uh, so I'd like to see us. I would like to make a motion, Dave, that we we have another work session. Uh, for perhaps the last week of March, where we actually work with you, with the fire chief, with the collector, with the mayor and the all the aldermen, to put together some hard numbers for a budget we can sustain. sustain. And mayor, I'd like to ask you to uh, understand that after I've looked at all these numbers with Dave, that the cashing of the CD is probably the only way that we can do it at this point. As far as yeah. these bills go. Yeah, if the board approves it, that's fine. I wouldn't let it do it. Yeah. Not by myself. No. Yeah. But we all understand. So I guess the, the, the question is how important is the new balanced budget? Are we all for a balanced budget? Mayor, are you for a balanced budget? Well, of course I am, but I, we need to do something and do it right away. Yes. Now, when, how far away did you set that meeting? Two weeks? No, I'm thinking we'll have it mar in March. March for what? Typically, when we have a second meeting, it's the fourth Thursday, which would be March the 28th. 28th, yeah. Let, let's do that because that might affect our rate increase for the following month. It'll also be at the beginning of the month where we can talk about other expenses, too. Okay, six o'clock. Six o'clock is good. I guess, guess second. The 28th. Second, second sponsor. I'll second that. Twenty-eight. And would you call uh, and make sure that we have our city clerk there, the fire chief, um, at that meeting, and all our all of them are here, so we can. Well, I'll be here. But be here. <laughs> but did, did, did you mean the collector? I mean the collector. I'm sorry. Okay. So that's the clerk. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to move on to CDs. Make a motion on that. I make a motion that we catch that CD. I'll sign you up. I think we should be close to the meeting. I
Madam Mayor, is this gonna, uh, issue going to be explained to us by our city clerk, or are you going to explain the CD issue? Well, I can explain it like this. I hate to be start messing with the CDs. When we do that, that's how to it up. We need to do something to get this back in the black, and we need to do it now, because otherwise it's going to really be bad. But I'm going to let him explain why he thinks he needs the money from the CDs. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, um, Saban. Right. As of today, um, in my QuickBooks accounting system, um, the general is in the negative over 11,000, water is in the negative over 8,000, sewers in the negative over 2,000. Um, this month already I had to transfer $2,100 from general and water and $3,100 from general and to sewer. I've completed cemetery, water meter deposit, police training. There's nowhere else to take money from. Um, we've also got Repairs coming up. The tractor is going to cost forty-three hundred dollars. Uh, the cop here is thirteen hundred. The truck needs to be repaired. The tornado siren needs to be repaired. So um, we make, can't wait to make payroll next week, much less these upcoming expenses. Um, the one I'm looking at the list here we get as close to where we need to be uh, would be to cash uh, number one of six of out of general and one sixteen out of sewer grinder that give us about. Once ten thousand, once seventeen hundred, that put us where we, you know, finish this month and hopefully we'll have back one for a little while. Okay, so Dave, um, is it in your estimation that if we uh, catch the CD and that this catches us up, or we will we experience this again in another two or three months? Oh, I expect to you know, catch another out a couple months. Okay. So uh, tell us the values of our CDs now that we're able to use. How much money we have in CDs? They're um, on, the, on the treasurer's report here. On uh, the side it says monthly treasurer's reports. Uh, the bottom section there lists all our CDs. They're all fair game except for number one thirteen, the <coughs> sewer, the big one, the hundred thousand dollars because we pledged that to the USDA. Um, that way our monthly payment to them it, it is less because we're holding that for them. But the rest are, are fair. Well, you know, we're about to go into a work session discussing the budget, and I think it might be better to go ahead and take this into the work session. But since you're already on the subject, as a city clerk, and you're working close to the budget every day, do you what do you, what do you recommend as a city clerk? What where you're you're facing writing some paying some bills on on the, on the big picture? Yeah, the big picture. Well. We're going to cover this in the work section, but I mean, water and sewer rates need to go up because they've gone up on us and we haven't passed that along to our customers. And you'll see each one's over $20,000 annual deficit. And I've been paying that money out of general, and general we passed a budget with a $53,000 deficit. So all the money we took in for taxes this year that's supposed to last us for the entire year is gone. Yeah. And that's why we're already dealing with cash out CDs just to stay in the black. Yeah. So what's the what's that total value again of what we have in CDs that can be kept? Uh, the, the two I'm looking at is number 106, which has a current value of $1,768. <coughs> and number 116, which has a value of $10,607.54. Okay. I make a motion that we carry this the work session this evening before we make our mind, Ms. Mayor. That sounds like a good idea. All right, I got a second. I'll second that. Side by side, that's the least of my worries tonight. We're just going to get it out of the way because we've got a lot of important stuff to cover yet. We really have. I have a question about that. Um, okay. Uh, to, to the clerk, how did we get this ordinance on the uh, agenda this evening? Um, at the last meeting, um, I had two, two aldermen sponsor to have this put on the on the agenda for this meeting. And that is because we had uh, we wanted to define the, the law for the police department uh, so that they could be able to clearly say, you know, uh, these areas are restricted and you can't use your vehicle on particular roads. So, uh, but we're not tabling this issue tonight. Well, I tell you what. I'd like to have a first reading of the ordinance. Here, I'll 
there's a new board coming on, and it's just going to prolong. There's new but if I table it, I think it should be tabled, shouldn't it? Or does, can he do this? He, he, to put something on the agenda, it takes two older men to do it, and they put it on the agenda, so it's a live item for the next meeting. Okay. All right, so I got a motion for a first reading. Yes. All right, do I have a second for okay. Okay, these take roll calls. Um, roll call vote for first reading of Bill 949, Alder Brian Helms. Here. Alder Rose Rosenzweig. Here. Alder Jennifer Weiss. Yes. Okay, first reading of Bill 949, an ordinance. Prohibiting golf carts and utility vehicles in the city of St. Mary. Motion for a second reading. Okay. I have a second for a second. I'll second that. All right. And roll call vote for a second reading of Bill 949. Alder Brian Helms. Here. Alder and Rose Rosewig. Here. Uh, Alder Jennifer Weiss. Yes. Second reading of Bill 949. An ordinance prohibiting golf carts and utility vehicles in the city of St. Mary. So my motion that we put this ordinance into effect. All right, I get a second for a passage. I'll second that. <coughs> Can we object to that? Nope. Can we question nope. that? Right. Nope, you can't object. No question, no nothing. We can't. Come on. Roll, yeah. roll call vote for passage of Bill 949. It's done. All in favor. All in favor. Here. All in Rose Rosenberg. All in Jennifer Lyons. All in Jennifer Lyons. Oh, I think you look at my Continue it. Continue 
situation. Okay, what I was saying, I one and I'm bringing this up before the board. They can talk about it. They can collect me. But do we really need a full time cop? That's a lot of money we're paying out. That's just it's brought up for you all to discuss. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we take this into our work session this evening. All right. Discuss it. That'd be fine. Okay, since Anthony, what did you have to say? You still want to say it? No, I have no. Okay. Well, then we're going to go to department reports. Hey, a second on the motion to table. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Okay. I got to get myself. That's cool. That's cool. Um, all I got um, is I got an official letter from FEMA that they closed out disaster 4250, which was the New Year's Day flood of 2016. Um, whenever FEMA gives you money, they they can take that money back from you up to three years. If the Inspector General finds that you did something wrong in the procurement of the process, um, we didn't do anything wrong, but they didn't check either. Um, but so that is officially done, so we don't have to worry about the first flood anymore in, in a couple of uh, yeah, years. Got but, yeah, I know we'll leave that, pull out the second one in about 16 months. So and we are going to like I'll let Frank cover the back. upcoming stuff. Are you thinking? Yeah, you're right here. Yeah, there you go. I've got a bunch here. I've got a good food. Okay, emergency <laughs> management. Oh, I, I get it. I'm good. The heart of parts. No, we got our four first. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I had 14 calls. I had 12 medic calls, one fire mutual aid for Perryville, and one fire investigation. Uh, the you guys know that we had a new uh, compressor at our firehouse for our SCBAs. Um, Sentinel uh, does the servicing on them, and what they do is they change the oil, uh, they change the purified filters, and they um, uh, check the air quality to make sure we're getting good air quality into our tanks that we breathe inside the household or anything in our SCBAs. Um, it's that time of year to service it, and it's going to be $649, and that's servicing it. The thing about it is it's still under warranty, so it's kind of hard for us to service it because if something goes wrong, then the company will not cover it if something would go wrong with it. If they service it, that's because they're the ones who sold it to us. If something would go wrong with it, then it's covered. So anyways, I'm, uh, the guy contacted me from Sentinel last week asking me about when we want to do it. So I'm going to have to talk to you guys as a board to see where our funds are set and everything. So I'm, uh, on that part, that's um, uh, going to be another expense that we're going to have to put out on that. Um, so I didn't know if you guys wanted to discuss that right now or if we can wait until the business meeting or whatever. Are you going to be here for the business meeting? I can be here. Did you? Because that would be helpful. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, we got a grant from the BFS Railroad uh, that me and Dave uh, signed up for last October. Uh, I only got a partial of it. Uh, the amount I asked for, we didn't get, but I did still get $5,000 of that. Wow. Uh, that's being spent on some turnout gear uh, to update our turnout gear because we're over 12 years old on a few of our, 12, or our turnout gear, so they uh, recommend us to be under 12 years of age on our turnout gear. That's uh, NPFA regulation. So um, the other thing is we're having a pump operations class at our firehouse through the Missouri University tomorrow night and um, uh, Saturday. Uh, so we will be using a hydrant for momentarily in uh, our portable pond. So I will have where we keep track of what we're pumping, and we're not. I'm going to try to get where we don't pump a whole lot of water. If we have to, I'm going to try to see if we can draft out a creek to pull water up to us. Uh, but we're going to see what they actually want us to do.
because they're the ones that's a certified class. So we're going to see what their the lead instructor instructor would like us to do on that part. <coughs> Um, basically, we're going to be go we're going to be going over drafting, but they're going to be going over drafting, hydrogen use, and I'm uh, transporting water. So uh, we're going to be going over all that. Uh, the other thing is too is I'd like to say with the springtime coming on, I know people's going to be doing their yard waste, burning, and everything. Um, we did get caught for an investigation in town because of somebody burning leaves and 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 nobody knew that it was actually going on. Uh, my protocol on that, it, it'd be nice if the public would actually call down the city hall here and tell Dave or even call my cell phone and let me know that way if they're burning, I know they're burning, that way the <coughs> joint calling me and saying, hey, we need to go investigate a fire. Uh, I'm trying to run our apparatus out. I'd rather to go out in my personal POV before I take an apparatus out and that's a cost on us and you know my guys. And, uh, the other thing is, is I mean, the ordinance uh, on that, I mean, no burning after dark, unless it's in a burn pit, no trash, uh, and then turn around and the winds are way over 50 miles an hour, we don't want to be burning. Uh, that's just like a rush pile down here. I did that yesterday and burned it, and uh, they said the wind were going to get up, so I buried it, so it couldn't go anywhere. So, uh, But other than that, that's all I got. You guys got anything for me? So. Some, uh, a little note on that. Um, I think that would be a good idea that if someone decides that they want to burn, I think they need to call down here to City Hall, talk to Dave, let Dave know about it, and then Dave, you in turn, let Franky you know. So that way you're not being bombarded by anybody in the, you know, in the, uh, Yeah, yeah. I mean, get your phone get that word out to everybody. The, the other question is, and I can put it on our website, or what, well, actually, Jody could probably put it on the website. Uh, okay. I can put it on our Facebook page for the fire department. Um, the other thing is too, is uh, if somebody's burning big brush piles or anything, I would like to know about it because uh, we do have an ordinance where the fire chief or a mm -hmm. member of the fire department actually goes checks in to see, make sure no power lines, it ain't within so many feet of a structure and all that. So <coughs> if Dave gets a phone call, he called me and says, hey, they're wanting to burn. I don't have a problem going checking out as long as I'm not busy. If I'm busy, then I'll have one of my other fire members to go check it out for me. So, uh, that's all I have right now. So. Can we also get that in the paper? Oh, and you have the police department. I don't have as many as normal. First couple of weeks, I had the flu in February and I'm recovering from it. But I still have 18 ordinance violations, which I was <coughs> marking up notices for. Dialing vehicles, debris, dangerous buildings. So, yeah, 18 of those. And then I got a couple more days before I did a citation if it's not resolved. And disturbance, I had two motors assist with a wounded cat that I had to take into the vet so they could put it down. And I had two investigations. <coughs> Sycamore to uh, Locust, uh, that's a one and a half inch line. Uh, what's going on there is we got a talk somewhere in between and we're needing to either have a jetter truck come in and jet it, which that's going to cost us uh, abundance of money for them just to get here to do it. And we don't even know if it's actually going to be effective. The other thing that I can do is actually dig the line up. Uh, me and Mike can dig it up and turn around and uh, find out where the clog's at. Uh, I did call about a new valve for that line because if that valve is actually bad, uh, it uh, broke and it's laying in the way or something, uh, a new valve is actually 200 
and I think forty dollars. I think that's what it is. Drove down, had my plant down there. Um, that's through L and J Supply down in Benton. Um, the other thing is too, is uh, that's the only other alternative I actually got because what I'm doing right now because it's so uh, hectic to try to get to each other, everybody's grinder. I actually got a manhole clean out actually. Uh, I will open a little bit where it can come out when somebody flushes their toilet. So that's kind of a situation that needs to be taken care of as soon as possible. And uh, we're just needing to know what we need to do on that. Like, you know, so. Is all of Cody involved in this? Well, I Cody's been involved with me. Uh, he said he was going to talk about it here tonight if he was here and see if we could get a decision on what we wanted to do. So all I need is whatever I need to do and contact some people to see what I can get done. So If you could get that to a development code and then a hook code you can get with our clerk, we could probably move on pretty quickly. Yeah. So I think and, I mean the only other alternative that me and Mike came up with was actually dig the valve up, cut the line, because that's gonna save cost of having a company come in and jetting it and it don't work. We're just gonna have to dig it up and see what's going on. Uh, but if the valve is bad then we're going to have to replace a valve. Uh, so that's all I got on that part. So. Okay, thank you, Kathy. But one way or another, it needs to be fixed. Right. I guess what I'll say, Mayor, is that uh, if we can get this detail down, we can figure out the beginning, the middle, and ending to it. Mm -hmm. Figure out what you want to do with it, get it to the clerk. Cody was with me on the job site, seeing what was going on. It yeah. was just trying to figure out which way we all wanted to go with it. Yeah. So next turn around, because uh, right now with the ground being wet, I don't even know if our backhoe would get up on that little hillside there and try to dig. I, I don't know if it will, um, because we're going to have to dig at least a four by four hole open to actually get in there and work and do what we need to do. Because I don't want the with the ground being saturated, I don't need the ground to cave in. On, so. Yeah. How, how long can you dump that now? Let it keep smelting in the ground without got to contaminate too much ground. Well, that there, I mean, the pit being concrete, I mean, it is soaking in the ground. Yep. But turn around, I mean, there ain't no other alternative to actually do anything because my hands are tied. So. I know that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, so. You put this contamination in the ground and you keep doing it week after week. Not good. <laughs> well, there's a certain sense of urgency to it. Yeah. I like to go through the life channels, I think. Yeah. Reporting it to Cody, getting it written down the way you want to approach it, getting approved, you can kind of say and do some thought. But when, 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 when will you see Alderman Cody again? Uh, I'll probably see him tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Could you uh, tell him what we talked about in this meeting? Yeah. Like, yeah, I ain't got a problem with telling him. It's just he was he knows that the money phones that you know getting what we need or whatever is you know a very thin ice right now. So. All right. All right. Parkinson care. Nothing to report for that or in the report. Just participation. Anybody want to speak? Yep. Um, I need to talk about street parking. jokers to give us a bid on some repairs on some streets patching um, and also the there's an area out on Bartles uh, Industrial Drive there's a this one's from jokers a couple of uh, street repairs patching and also the culvert that's out there uh, the, the uh, excuse me the water pipe out there on Bartles Drive, that is um, getting to be pretty rough over there. But anyway, they gave us an estimate. I talked to Bowman um, last week. They're working on a proposal for us also, and I just haven't had anything come back from Bowman yet. So they're working on that for us. Uh, the same areas 
of street patching um, and also with the Bartles Industrial and um, to also work on 4th Street, um, some different areas for us. So when I get that, I'll let you know and we'll have a couple of bids to see if we can work with to do that. The other thing is I wanted to mention, and Frankie can probably help me out here, um, I know you just talked about at the beginning of the meeting, um, the John Deere tractor. Um, that we have an estimate from them for $4,300, but I talked to, had Frankie and, this is the one from John Deere, sorry. Uh, I had Frankie and Mike talk to Dave Audie. He's going to come and look at our tractor for us and possibly give us a much, much better deal for it. Mr. Audie's done work for us before? Yes. Yes. So when I hear something from that, then I will definitely let you know also. Quite a bit cheaper. Alderman, oh, yeah. can I ask you a question about this? So uh, we see your budget total <coughs> here on our budget right now. Are you planning on doing all this work within that? Uh, no, these are just sort of different areas that I wanted to have it looked at. doesn't mean that we have to have them all done at one time. Just the um, right, yes. Yeah. So we'll get those done. And as far as the tractor goes, I know that that is not just the street department, it goes with all the departments, so that will be have, you know, have to be talked about with all of us. Okay. You have one with it? Yes. He's going to come over and look at it for us. So. Good. Okay. <coughs> have I got everybody covered now? Then we're going to do citizens for kids and Me? Okay, go. I got a question. File truck. This thing's a pretty nice truck. I found there's five things wrong with it right now that haven't been fixed. Mm -hmm. Why? There's money in the water, the, the street fund, especially for fixing equipment and streets. <coughs> now, how's that windshield get busted on that thing? That windshield has been busted, not recently. There was a little hole. When that thing was bought, there was a little pinhole in that thing. Over time, with the cold, the hot, the cold, the hot, the last couple of years, Honey, that has gone stretching out. When that was bought, there was no hole there, and you weren't even on the board or running. No. But that's I know, what, I I know and that's what Frankie has said. There was a little pinhole in that windshield. And over the time, which I, I have a couple of um, people that Dave even went and got um, estimates for me to have repair. repair. Then we got transmission lines leaking. Okay. okay. So how good. are you knowing all these things are not wrong with that? Huh? How do you know all these things are wrong with it? I've been around long enough to talk to people. I know what's wrong with it. You gonna tell me it's not wrong with it? I don't know that transmission was wrong with it. Why is the transmission line leaking? Yeah. I okay. I Mike told you. Uh, no. Mike didn't tell you. No. Well, I don't know that the transmission line was wrong. There's like three things wrong with that truck. It's been fixed. You let them go, and it just get worse. I think that's so, and, and we work with what we have to work to get those things fixed, but we also have to work about a budget first and get this. And I know that that money is in there for the street department and, right. and get those so things that fixed. Don't, that don't I know that. But I also want to get the streets fixed too and different things well, fixed. I know that. But you, if you don't fix these, they're going to get worse. Yes. You're going to have nice streets, you're not going to have a truck yes. you're going to use. If you don't have a building, but the windshield doesn't make a mechanic out of it, it does mechanics for it. Well, the transmission does, and so does one valve for the uh, the feeds of the tarpon. I mean, the uh, I'm on, frankly. But Dave, are you aware of this? I guess it's an audio valve. Well, there's a valve yeah. that helps the feed the fuel yeah. when it's under stress. It's not working right. I'm just okay. Yeah. okay. There was some some something that you had told me about whenever we had yeah we said that, that Eric was going to look at it, but then that bad weather came in and we didn't take right. it back out. Right. And we did have Eric look at one thing, and he gave us. Um, Something, or an estimate, not an estimate, but uh, a work order that was different things that was wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And he also said that there's other things that need to be fixed too. I know that there are things that need to be fixed with it. I know that. Okay. But that is not that, you know, I'm not trying to say that, that machine, that vehicle is not important to us. It is important to us. Sure, it is. And I'm not neglecting it. But I also have to do other things too. These things will get fixed. I'll tell you what, fix the streets, and when you haven't done nothing to take care of the streets, then you worry about it then, huh? Okay. But they will get fixed. I think we've got enough settled this issue. You prioritize it and keep it in mind, get it fixed. Huh. 
Okay. I guess we can adjourn this meeting and go into the workstation. I make a motion that we adjourn our meeting. I'll second it. I don't know